SD is an intuitive concept, but it has a complex calculation. And since in GMAT we do not have a calculator, we are not asked to do that calculation. I think GMAT has always been in sync with what the actual requirements of a test taker are uh, for MBA as well as for future life. But then more about that later. Let's start with standard deviation now. The standard deviation is a very interesting concept. It does involve a lot of hard calculations. But of course, since we don't have a calculator in GMAT, we will not be expected to do those. Uh, what we will be expected uh, to know is how to know the relative standard deviation of two different sets. For that, we don't really need to calculate anything. We'll just use the number line and we'll be able to figure out. Okay, so first of all, what is standard deviation? It is the dispersion of the elements of a set from the mean of the set. So, for example, and we'll use a number line in this case. So, for example, if we have a set of three elements, say three, four, and five. So, this is a set S given with three elements, three, four, and five. <clears throat> So the mean of this set is right here, 4 in the center. And SD calculates how far away the other elements of the set are from the mean. Now, there is a certain SD that we calculate using this formula. And we'll just take a look at this formula shortly. Uh, first of all, now here there will be some SD. Let's say the SD over here is A. Now, for example, if we have a set like this. Now, again, the mean over here is 4. But then look at this. The elements are, there are elements which are much farther away from the mean. We have 2 and 6. They are so much farther away. Of course, we still have that 3 and 5. So overall, now the elements are not as closely packed as they were over here. Let's say if we had the, these elements 3.5 and 4.5 also over here. So then 5 elements here and 5 elements over here. Look at that. These are so much closely packed, whereas these are not. And that is why the SD over here will be higher than the SD over here. Now, this is what we would be expected to know for GMAT. Okay, let's take a look at the formula as well. SD is equal to the square root of variance. And what is variance? Variance is sigma AI minus A average. Now, don't get freaked out by all this. It's fine. Even if you don't understand it, I'll just explain you what all this means. So, let's say we have the set 3, 4, 5 and the average over here is 4. So, now we are calculating how 3, 4 and 5 are far away from 4. How far are they? Now, our calculation goes something like this. 3 minus 4 square plus 4 minus 4 square plus 5 minus 4 square and the whole thing divided by 3. All right, so what is this 3 minus 4? The 4 is the average over here. So that is the mean, that is the average. We say how far is each element? So how far is 3 from 4? We say 3 minus 4 and we square that. Then we add to it how far is 4 from 4? Well, that is 0. So we square that and add that too. How far is 5 from 4? Again, we square that and we add it. And we divide the whole thing by the number of elements, which is 3 over here. And then we take the square root. So now look what happens. When we have 3, 4, 5, this is how we calculate the SD. When we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the average is again 4. How are we going to calculate the SD in this case? Now we'll say 2 minus 4 square plus 3 minus 4 square plus 0 plus 5 minus 4 square plus 6 minus 4 square upon 5. Now the numerator, look at that, has increased by a whole lot, 2 minus 4, because 2 was quite far away from 4, relatively speaking. So we added a uh, 2 square, that is a 4 in the numerator. Plus, we added another 4 from here, 6 minus 4 square, that is another 4 we added. So, we added 8 to the numerator, but we also added 2 to the denominator. So, then how can we be sure that SD has increased in this case? Well, normally, when we add elements at, at the extremes, that is the ones which are far away from the average, far away from the mean, then the SD increases. 
because the numerator increases by a whole lot if the element that we added is far away from the average the denominator increases of course but normally when we are adding at the extremes then the overall impact is that sd goes up but for example if we were to say that our set is 3 4 4 and 5 then of course we know that the numerator has not changed because the average of this set is still 4 so the numerator only gets an, another zero so it doesn't change but the denominator has become from 3 to 4 we are comparing this particular set with this particular set now the denominator has become 4 whereas the numerator has stayed the same that that means the sd will be lower in this case right so then the general rule of thumb is that when we add an element at the extreme we'll put them on the number line we'll put all the elements on the number line put the mean right in the center and then we'll put the other elements over here then now the general rule of thumb is that if we include a new element at one of the extremes here or here or close to the extremes then the sd will normally increase and if we put them close to let's say the mean at mean or close to the mean then the sd will normally decrease of course we can't say that if you put an element over here what will happen to the overall sd we'll actually need to calculate and this is the calculation we can't really perform on gmat so that is why they'll not ask us such a question they'll only ask us where the um, where it is quite obvious uh, whether the sd will increase or decrease yeah okay so uh, we look at some examples of those now let's just make some space first all right okay now list s is equal to 3 3 3 3 all right so you know all the elements of s are at 3 only 3 is of course the mean as well the sd in this case is obviously zero because there is no dispersion of the elements around the mean all the elements are at the mean itself what about this list t we have 0 10 20 30 and 40 so our 20 is the average here 10 0 30 40 of course the elements are dispersed around we will be calculating using the formula so we will get some positive value of sd so sd of this set list t would be higher okay list s is 3 4 5 6 7 now we'll say 5 is here in the middle it is the mean 3 and 6 and 7 well we have taken uh, arithmetic progressions in these cases only for ease of calculating the arithmetic mean of course otherwise you know it could be any list or any set it doesn't matter 14 13 12 and 15 and 16 now look at that mean over here is 5 and we will calculate the sd we'll say 4 minus 5 whole square 3 minus 5 6 minus 5 and 7 minus 5 and divide the whole thing by 5 now here the mean is 14 we'll say 13 minus 14 whole square 12 minus 14 and then 15 minus 14 and 16 minus 14 whole square divide the whole thing by 5 again even though these are two different lists their sds will be exactly the same because they show a, an absolutely same dispersion on the number line look if i move this entire set nine steps to the right on the number line i'll get this entire set but the dispersion of this entire set is exactly the same as that of this set from their mean they are equally dispersed the way these numbers are dispersed from their mean so that is why in this case our sd will be this equal so sd1 will be equal sd s let's say of list s will be equal to sd of list t okay what's about case 3 3 4 5 6 and 2 3 4 5 6 7 so we have added two elements over here at the extremes and we know that when we add elements at the extreme then our sd increases so we can say that sd of t will be higher we just saw that example sometime ago okay list s is 579 and t is 55799 
again we are adding elements at the extreme only they are far away from the mean which is 7 over here that is why we uh, expect that the sd of t will be higher okay here 4 6 8 10 12 and 4 6 7 8 8 10 12 we have added two elements 1 8 and 1 7 the um, mean over here is 8 the mean over here is somewhere very close to 8 so then we have added two elements which are very close to the mean and that is why the sd of t will be lower in this case so whenever i hear sd i imagine a number line with the data points on it now if the data points are closely packed together then i expect a small value of the sd and if they are far apart then i expect a large value for the sd we have five sets we calculate the sd of each and then include the number 50 in each and calculate the sds again which set saw the maximum absolute increase in its sd and which set saw the least okay we don't have to actually calculate the sd as we discussed before of course so we'll just put them on the number line we'll say this is 7 this is 6 this is 5 and we have 8 and we have 9 now what do we do we calculate the sd over here so numbers are close to each other you know one away two away etc so the sd will be some small value maybe one point something or whatever and then we add the number 50 to it which is really really far away from the mean and now we know that sd will increase certainly and it will increase by a big amount now what happens over here again we have zero here we have two here we have five here then we have minus two here and we have minus five here Okay, so again, the mean is zero. Here also we have five numbers, just like we had five numbers over here. Now, again, when we add 50, now 50 is even farther away from the mean because the mean is zero. Here the mean was seven. So 50 was far away. But then we were just adding the 43 square. I mean, it's not just, it's a big number that we're adding to the numerator. But here we are actually adding 50 square to the numerator. Of course, in both the cases, we're adding one to the denominator. The denominator was five before because we had five numbers. Now it's six. Here again from five, it has gone to six. But here we're actually adding uh, 50 square over here. So we're adding an even bigger number in the numerator. So then the change in the SD over here will be even higher. The change will, the SD will increase by an even greater amount than it will over here. Okay. How about here? So now this is 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Of course, again, we'll calculate the SD over here. It's not much different from this particular case. Just that here, the numbers are a little farther apart. Here, they were only one and then two apart. But here, there are two and then four apart. So the initial SD of this set will be higher than the initial SD of set A. Initial SD of C will be higher than initial SD of A. But that's not what we have to focus on. Now, we have to focus on... When we add 50 over here, of course, the SD of C increases as well. The mean here is 7. So again, we add 43 square over here in the numerator. The difference between 50 and 7 is 43. So square of that. And in the denominator, we add 1 only. So of course, SD will increase again, but not as much as, as it increased for set B. Because there we had added 50 square, not 43 square, because our mean was 0. Okay, so here till now we see that B has the maximum SD increase uh, when we add 50 out of A, B and C. Let's go to D. Now D, the 40 is the mean over here, 45, 50, then 35 and 30. Now, when we add another number at 50, what happens? Of course, the SD increases because again, we are adding a number at the extreme. But does it increase as much as it did when we uh, when um, we added 50 to B? Well, most certainly not. Here, we're just adding a 10 square in the numerator. The difference between the mean 40 and the number we are adding 50 is only 10. 
Of course, in the denominator, in each case, we are adding one to five. So that's okay. That's the same for all of them because all of them have five elements to begin with. And to all of them, we add a 50. So here also the SD will increase, but not that much at all. It will increase, but by a small amount. All right. Now here, what happens here? Our average is 80. And then we have six, 70 here, 60 here, then 90 here and 100 here. Now we are adding 50 to it. Now the difference between 50 and 80 is 30. So we are adding 30 square to our numerator. Again, here we are adding only 10 square to our numerator. Here we are adding 30 square to our numerator. Of course, we'll add it all up. We'll you know do the underscore and everything. But then overall increase in SD over here will be higher as compared to over here in D. So the overall increase in SD in E is going to be more than the increase in SD in D. Of course, we also discussed that the increase in SD in A, B, and C will be more, whereas here it will not be that much higher because 50 is not that far off from their average. So that is why the set in which, which will see the maximum increase in its SD will be B. And the set that will see the minimum increase in its SD will be D because 50 is much closer to its mean.